say a word of prayer um, as we delve into the scripture. So Lord, thank you again for another wonderful Sabbath day. Thank you for everyone that is actually on this platform listening. And I pray that your word, not mine, will be expressed to your people on this year Sabbath day. I pray also, Lord, that you will guide us through your word in a very direct and um, specific way so that we will be able to pick up on some of the precious jewels that you have hidden in your word. Thank you for hearing and answering prayers. And we ask for the guidance of your Holy Spirit. All these things we ask in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the title of my sermon, as mentioned before, has to do with dreaming of a brighter or better tomorrow. And it's aptly um, linked to a very popular story that we are familiar with um, in the Bible. Um, it's a story that we have heard many versions thereof, but for today, we're gonna plunge a bit deeper in terms of looking at um, some of the lessons to be learned um, and how it is that these lessons can be applied in our everyday lived experiences. So my story actually begins in the book of Genesis. Um, and you have read the scripture reading, um, which is aptly linked to the object, the main object lesson of the story. Um, so it's a book of Genesis um, and it's chapter 37. So I'll be pretty much providing you with some summaries um, because we have a specific time that we're working with. Uh, so it's chapter 37 um, and it starts off. Um, Joseph, sorry, Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. And um, these are the generations of Jacob. And then we see here the Bible specifically mentioning something um, very important. It says, Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the son of um, Bilhal, Bilhal, sorry, and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wife, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. So we begin with um, some very important notes to be made. At this point in time, Joseph was actually 17 years old. And um, it was obvious that his relationship with his father seemingly was very close in that he um, would be considered a pet in regards to the love that his father had for him. And it's obvious by um, verse six, verse chapter, um, verses, verse three, where it says Israel, same as um, Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his um children. Um, this was specifically because, you know, his favorite wife, um, Rachel, had passed. Joseph was a son, um, as mentioned in the Bible, of his old age. And for this purpose, uh, Israel made a coat of many colors for Joseph. And we know the story behind that coat. Uh, one of the lessons that this brings out is the fact that the demonstration or the outward demonstration of love for a specific child, especially when you have more than one, uh, you are aptly creating uh, a source of contention. And the Bible illustrated um, thereafter that when his brethren saw uh, that their father actually loved um, jo Joseph more than them, it created strife and they could not speak peaceably with him. You know, sometimes, you know, in a parental um, setup, there are opportunities for us to, you know, be mindful of not demonstrating favoritism. And we have seen where many a, a, um, youth have gone through life with uh, a sense of um, inferiority based upon the fact that they were not preferred to their to their to, to their sibling. Um, this has demonstrated itself in many ways, and we have seen it having a negative impact in terms of sibling rival rivalry to the point where you have siblings who contend with each other, not based upon anything that is actually linked 
to um, a grievance, but rather the preferential treatment that one may have enjoyed over the other. So as parents, it's wise to be mindful of how you demonstrate love. So the chapter goes on to say that Joseph actually dreamed a dream and he told it to his brethren. And as a result of what was expressed, they hated him even more. So one, he was obviously the favorite. Two, he expressed a dream that aroused envy and anger within them. And the dream was very straightforward. It says that, you know, they were both, they were all in a field and, you know, he had a particular sheave and his sheave stood upright and their sheaves actually bowed to his sheep. And then further on, we see that Joseph had a second dream. And this time around, it was a bit more expansive. It was the sun, the moon, and the 12 stars around Joseph that were actually bowing to him. And when this dream was actually communicated to um, Israel or Jacob, even Jacob was actually triggered by it in that he rebuked Joseph and what the Bible says thereafter is that his brothers hated him even more. Um, the second lesson that I wanted to point out is that you have to be mindful of the type of dreams that you express verbally to other people. Dreams oftentimes lead to other people developing envy, and this can actually undermine the dream in of itself. There are many a times, you know, people face adversity. It's not namely because people just randomly hate them. It's because of how they are manifesting their dreams and how they express their dreams. And so you have to be mindful of this. And so Joseph being young and entitled may have been somewhat um, boastful in regards to the presentation of the dream. And in light of this presentation, it would have only cemented the utter hatred of his brothers towards him. And so we see here that Joseph, while understanding the fact that the dreams were important because this was a double dream, this was a sure dream. Anytime you see a dream mentioned in the Bible and it has a duality to it in terms of its reinforced, it means that the dream would have been sure. And so when we have our dreams, and when we are in the process of dreaming, it's important that we understand God's purpose for our lives in connection with that dream. Usually, many of us have dreams, but that those dreams sometimes don't align with God's will. And even sometimes those dreams are actually in of themselves pure, but based upon where we are trending as it relates to our character, those dreams can actually take us away from the will of God. And so it's important for us to align um, the dreams that God has given to us by inspiration with his will. And that's the only sure way that we can actually be able to enjoy the full manifestation of our dreams without any sort of negative consequences. So, of course, we'll continue further um, in that Joseph... Um, obviously enjoyed the company of his father. And likewise, his father would have done enjoyed the same. And so his brethren were sent afar off with the cattle to a land called Shechem. Um, and prior to this um, journey, there was an incident that took place previously um, in chapter 34 where um, there was a major disturbance in Shechem as a result of um, Simeon and Levi's action. And I'll get to that later on. But being that there was a major disturbance in Shechem and they were gone for a long time, Jacob or Israel became somewhat concerned in regards to the fate of his sons. And so while it may not have been his main desire, he decided to send um, Joseph to just go and look. And naturally, with that would come a report. So he was both sending Joseph, um, the reporter, to make an assessment of what was going on, while at the same time ensuring that they were safe. Um, and so 
we see Joseph departing um, and allowing for himself to be, be sent in that when his father mentioned, um, you know, your bridging are in Shechem, I will send thee unto them. He said, here am I. And so it demonstrated that even though there was a bit of pride in um, Joseph, he was a very obedient son. And so he went in search of his brethren, and he wore that robe of pride in terms of that coat of many colors. And upon seeing him afar off, his brethren decided to, you know, in, in, in the street terms, to run a program on Joseph. Um, this program was one that would ultimately delete Joseph, but nevertheless, um, it was born out of the fact that they were very fearful of his dreams. And sometimes you have to be mindful of the manifestation of your dreams because your dreams can actually elicit fear in other people. Um, and that is something that you have to be conscious of in regards to how you present your dreams and how you live your dreams um, in light of that. Um, so we see here um, in verse 19, it says, they said to one another, behold, the dreamer cometh," And the conspiracy took on a natural flow from there where they say, come, let us slay him and cast him into a pit. And we will say some evil beast has devoured him. And we shall see what come, will become of his dream. So that's verse 20 of chapter 37. And so we see here the dreams were of such a nature that they elicited both envy and hatred at the same time towards Joseph. He was just mere, a mere 17-year-old. Um, what threat could he be to these grown men, most of whom were grown? Um, but yet still, the dream was enough um, to trigger them to a point where they wanted to kill him. And this wasn't just a casual threat. Um, by virtue of chapter 34, and you don't have to go there, uh, we see where Simeon and Levi actually slew an entire village of men by virtue of the fact that one gentleman in that village um, sexually assaulted or raped his, their sister. And so these weren't men who weren't killers. In fact, Levi, um, Levi and Simeon were actual killers enough, enough the, the, the fact that they slew an entire village. So this wasn't going to be um, something new to them. They had the propensity for this. And later on, when Israel was pronouncing a blessing on his sons, he identified the, the wrath of Simeon and Levi as being very much an issue for their future. So we see that the propensity for evil was here, the propensity for violence was here, and Joseph's, Joseph's dreams were the main catalyst for this anger. Um, we see manifested here the fact that when we operate outside of the will of God in terms of how we manifest our dreams, it can lead to envy in ways that can actually lead to our demise. And we have to be mindful of this in terms of how we express ourselves and how we treat with the manifestations of um, those inspirations that we will get from time to time towards a brighter future. And it says that when Joseph came, they actually stripped him of his robe of many colors and eventually threw him into a pit. Luckily, the pit was empty and didn't have any water. Um, I want to point out an object lesson. Not every pitfall is to your detriment. And not every pitfall is geared towards destroying you. Some pitfalls are actually geared towards preserving you. Um, and in this case, um, for Joseph, this pitfall was actually geared towards preserving him. And importantly so, it was an opportunity to get him out, out of the sight of his brothers. Um, and sometimes that pitfall that you may um, be, be so much ruminating on or thinking about, you know, this changed my life forever, may have been the means through which God preserved your life. And so sometimes we have to be mindful of how we murmur and how critical we are of the providences 
though they may not always manifest in a way that is favorable, we have to recognize that even within that pit, it provides us with an opportunity to be preserved. And so Joseph was stripped of his pride symbolically when they took off that robe of many colors and he was actually thrown into the pit on the request of Reuben who didn't want for him to be slain but was actually planning to rescue him later on. Um, he was actually thrown into a pit. And it is mentioned that Reuben decided to just take a walk um, and in taking a walk, the plot again um, resumed in that you had Levi and Simeon who obviously were of a violent nature and they were actually planning to go ahead with the killing of Joseph. And it was at this point in time that there were merchants passing by. Um, and these merchants in terms of passing by were relatives, they were Midianites um, uh, and, and Ishmaelites. And you know, Judah not being able to prevent what was about to happen decided to offer a, a, a su suggestion, you know, why not sell him instead of kill him? And this was seen as a favorable outcome in that they wouldn't have the blood of their brother on their hands. And so they sold him for 20 pieces of silver. You know, each man was able to get um, two pieces of silver um, for themselves. But the main fact of the matter is that in this pit-like situation, where he went from the favored son or the, 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 the beloved son to one that was now in bondage, we see the transitioning that would take place in allowing for Joseph to be matured in a very short time span, in that he got the full picture of what pride would lead to. And from then on, we see a different young man emerging, one that grew um, mightily in, in, in terms of his character. And the story goes on to say that he was then sold um, to Potiphar. We all know the story of what obtains with Potiphar's wife in that she, you know, um, saw the young man. Um, Joseph found grace in the sight of Potiphar and served him well. Um, and as a result of that, Potiphar made him overseer of all that he had. But the main thing that was, 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 was of importance was that God was with Joseph throughout his circumstances. You know, and sometimes we may be going through our pitfalls, we may be going through our bondage in that it could be financial bondages, it could be um, emotional bondages, it could be relationship bondages. God is still there with you. And irrespective of how you may feel in regards to the hurt as expressed or communicated through your trials, God is still there with you. And it's a reminder for us today, irrespective of how far we feel as if we are from our dreams or dreams towards a greater level of spirituality or dreams towards a better quality of life, God is still there with you, irrespective of how things may seem. Um, we see Joseph transitioning from the pit and ultimately landing in prison. And this obviously was a major detour from the original dream that he had. Uh, it was far removed from the original dream that he had. Uh, and one of the things that I want to point out in terms of our object lessons is that irrespective of where you are in the spectrum of life, God is still in control. He is the main writer. He is the writer of the script. And all things will work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to his promise. And this is very important for you to recognize because in today's world, you will be faced with a lot of trying circumstances, circumstances that takes you outside of the realm of safety. It seems as if you're pretty much all alone. It seems as if no one is there in terms of to help you. It seems as if your circumstances are getting worse and worse each year. And in Joseph's, Joseph's case, from a 17-year-old, um, the attempted murder um, that he, 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 he was able to escape, being sold or trafficked in terms of his brothers, pushed him into, in, into being trafficked, human trafficking. So, you know, attempted murder, human trafficking, 
then, you know, he experienced someone actually telling a blatant lie upon him. Um, he's now in prison. But in all of this experience, we see Joseph maintaining a good character. And oftentimes when we start to go to trials, we think that, you know, it, 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 it doesn't pay to be good. But I'm here to tell you this morning that it pays to remain faithful to God, irrespective of the circumstances that you find yourself in. Because at the end of the day, our circumstances, while they may come at us in a very um, strong and forceful way towards the destruction of all of our dreams, God is still in control. And when we serve him and reflect his character, it then allows for us to enjoy the blessings that will pour forth from him. So irrespective of where Joseph found himself, himself rather, we see the, the Bible recording that the Lord was with Joseph. He may not have felt as if the Lord was with him, but he, the, the Bible sp speaks specifically that, um, you know, chapter 39, verse 2, it says the Lord was with Joseph and he was, was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So we see that being the case, and the same thing applies in terms of the prison. When he went to prison, he found favor with the prison um, guard. And we then again see the fact that the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And so regardless of how we may be feeling, and, and this is where we have to transition away from walking by, 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 by feelings and by, by, by sight and our five senses to walking by faith and living by faith, living as if we are all alone in this world and we have only God to look to. And this was the case in, in, in regards to Joseph. As I skip along, we see that his journey towards his dream, there was a gap. And that gap required Joseph to develop in terms of the man that God wanted him to be. And sometimes our circumstances, though they may come at us in a negative way, they are actually dear towards fashioning us or pruning us towards becoming better um, and having a more uh, reliable, spirit-filled character. And so we see here in terms of um, Joseph's story that his transition away from his father's house, from the pit to the prison, um, was a transition point whereby he got an opportunity to learn how to be humble, to how to be humble, and secondly, you know, to learn how to trust God. And so uh, we fast forward a bit. Here we see Pharaoh sentencing his 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 baker as well as his cupbearer to prison. And we know the story of what obtains. Um, Joseph saw them being sad based upon the fact that they had a dream. He interpreted the dream for them. He told the baker that his fate would have been death um, as a result of what the dream represented. And he told the cupbearer that, you know, his dream meant that he would have been restored to serving um, Pharaoh um, his wine. Um, and Joseph made just one simple request, a simple request. Uh, you know, whenever you stand before Pharaoh, just give him a word. Just mention my name to him, how I operate. Um, mention my character and see if that can um, leverage my freedom. Um, it so happened that the Bible mentioned that the, the cupbearer, the fact that Joseph interpreted his, his dream and he was restored, it was two long years afterwards before he even remembered Joseph. And sometimes, you know, we will have a lot of people that come into our lives um, and the human agent can oftentimes delay or disrupt, but they can't deny God's will for your life. And ultimately the dream 
um, that you may have for a brighter tomorrow. And I want you to be mindful of that because oftentimes we find that we are on this journey and we become so caught up with, you know, people being ungrateful. And we have a lot of ungrateful people that we encounter from time to time. We have a lot of people who will intentionally do us harm when all we do towards them is good. And sometimes that will put us in a place where we are so caught up with anger and unforgiveness that it starts to rob us of an opportunity to reclaim our dreams. And at this point in time, I just want to point out to you that it is important to let go and let God. And in times where, you know, you have been hurt, you know, Joseph was sold um, into slavery. There was an attempt on his life. Um, he was um, framed or, or someone lied um, on him in terms of putting, resulting in him being put in prison. And, you know, he provided assistance to someone who totally forgot about the assistance that he provided and the words of encouragement that he provided, so much so that it was two years later. And we know the story that um, the, the, in, um, in, in chapter 41 of Genesis, it tells us that Pharaoh had a dream um, and the dream was very specific. It says that um, there came up seven well-fatted um, kind or, 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 or we would ca call calf and um sell seven ill 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 um ill favored ones and the ill favored ones actually ate up the well the the fatted ones and um that was a one dream and then the second dream was where there were seven um ears of corn um and then there were set well fat and, and flourishing ears of corn and then there were seven malnourished ears of corns and the, the malnourished ones ate up the, the, the fatted corn. And we see that this dream troubled um, Pharaoh to the point where there was no one in the kingdom that could answer um, the, 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 the riddle in regards to what the dream actually meant. And it was at this point in time that the cupbearer, his conscience pricked him and he was reminded of Joseph. And so sometimes we might feel as if we are forgotten, but God has a way of using the circumstances around us, not only in our lives, but in the lives of others to, 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 to get us back to where we need to be. And in this case, um, Joseph benefited from um, the, 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 the opportunity that came in terms of there was a void and um, that void would have been on account of the fact that um, no one could interpret Pharaoh's dreams. And we see that Pharaoh sent and got Joseph, and Joseph was able to interpret the dreams um, in a way whereby he gave Pharaoh the assurance that God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace, and God is able to interpret um, dreams. And so we see by virtue of Joseph being able to... to um, interpret the dreams, he was actually given a position of promise um, in regards to um, being made overseer or prime minister of um, Egypt. The point that I want to point out here is that be between the time that Joseph um, was in his father's house when he was 17, and um, when he stood before um, Pharaoh, he, at that point in time, would have been 30 years old. Um, and it says so in, in chapter 41, verse 46. And it says, and Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of, e of Egypt. And why this is important, the Bible starts off by mentioning when he was 17, what obtained, and mentioned that he was 30 when he actually um, was appointed by Pharaoh as prime minister. And between that 17 
year old um, version of Joseph to this now 30 year old version, we see a span of 13 years. And this was a, a span of 13 years of trials and tribulation. We see 13 years of um, a meandering of his, his, his journey towards his original dream. And one of the things that I want you to, to want to remind you of is that irrespective of where you are in life's journey, some of you may have had dreams when you were much younger. Um, and these dreams weren't just of the sort where you were just fantasizing. They were dreams that would have been presented to you by virtue of inspiration from God. But somehow, some way along the lines, life's circumstances may have taken you off course. I want to remind you today that when you put your trust in the ultimate author, you have nothing to fear. God is able to rewrite your circumstances. He is able to rewrite the narrative. He is able to reform the character and show the development of the character in, in, in your story. And he is able to bring you back to the place that you ought to be at. And so when we think of God from that perspective of being in control of all the variables, all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. And we see if you had asked Joseph while he was in the pit, how would his dream come forward? He could not answer you. If you had asked Joseph while he was in the prison, it, it didn't seem as if it was possible. He now had a criminal record and he now had a lot of baggages in terms of anger and hurt and pain. But now we see the manifestation of that dream as per still maintaining his character, one, and two, still focused on serving God as best as possible in and through the trying circumstances that he would have been exposed to. And my message to you, you know, life has a lot that it will throw your way. Um, you know, you will experience um, unforeseen events, negative events in your lives. You know, people will do you things that will ultimately um, seem to derail your hopes and dreams and your, 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 your ambition as far as where you want your life to go. But as long as your dreams are aligned to the will of God, there is nothing that can actually derail them. They may be delayed, um, they may be disrupted, but they can't be denied. And I want to remind you of that because it is important to understand that irrespective of how we may feel concerning our position in life, concerning our current state, in life, God is able, he is able to save us and not only to save us, but also to provide us with an expected end. One that is geared towards um, peace and prosperity and one that is actually geared towards helping us to come to terms with his power and his glory. And so when we recognize that all things work together for good, irrespective of what comes our way, we are able to see further down the road and beyond our circumstances. And that will provide us with peace, that peace which passes all understanding. You're in the midst of a, a, a trying circumstance, um, but that peace which passes all understanding is able to envelop your mind because you know that there is an author that is rewriting that script and putting you in a better position than expected. And likewise, in the case of Joseph, if, if there's one thing that you can take away from this situation is that you can always dream of a brighter tomorrow because God is in control. Um, I'll leave it there for today. Um, thank you um, for sharing in the word with me today. And I hope this will have been of a blessing to you. Thank you.